and look at all those um, acorns at the bottom of the little stream there glinting in the in the sunshine oh, it's quite magical as if they've been strewn like uh, little gold coins <laughs> I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Sopley in Hampshire just uh, on the B3347 between Christchurch and Ringwood. It's about two and a half miles north of Christchurch and today we're going to be doing a four and a half mile circular walk to the north and the east of the village across some beautiful fields, some wonderful woodland and some babbling streams. We'll be seeing a few interesting things along the way including something called starlight but I'll tell you a bit about that when we come across it. Now I'm filming at the end of September as you can probably tell I'm squinting in the sunshine. It is a glorious sunny morning. I think this is uh, probably going to be one of the last good days of the summer so we're going to make the best of it, so do join us. Well I parked my car at uh, the little free car park next to the village hall. Before we head out into the countryside there are a couple of things that I want to show you in the village first. Firstly, the church which is right by me here. And uh, what a pretty church it is as well. And this is the uh, the Church of St Michael's and All Saints and it actually sits on a high mound and it may well have been the site of a pagan temple originally. Part of it dates from the 11th century but most of it was constructed in the 13th and 14th centuries and then restored and added to several times since. I noticed there's a small sculpture of St Michael above the porch I'm looking up at the tower there, it holds six bells I believe. And there are certainly some impressive gravestones and memorials in the churchyard. And up on this mound you do get some glimpses of the River Avon. There is quite a drop to the south and I wonder actually if the land has been quarried away here which has given it more prominence. Well, seeing as I'm up on the mound here, we can get a really good view of uh, the Sopley Mill. The original mill was here as far back as 1086 and is recorded in the Doomsday Book. And over the years it's been renovated and rebuilt many times. The current uh, mill was built in 1780 and a top floor was added in 1878 and it was in commercial use as recently as 1955. Now I'm not sure if any milling is done there these days. I know the water wheel is still there. I believe it's a wedding and events venue now. And then just looking over the top of uh, the roof there, there's some uh, wonderful views. Uh, that's across the River Avon and onto the ridge on the other side. Well, we're just making our way through the village and here's the pub, the Woolpack originally a cottage with a wool store in 1725. Sheep farming was very big in the area, particularly merino sheep that were introduced from Spain. It became a pub in 1783 and the whole area around here was well known for smuggling. Well we've made our way out of Sopley. It's quite a cute little village, some uh, really interesting buildings and there's a nice forge we pass by. Anyway, we're out into the countryside now and we're initially going to follow the Avon Valley Path which is that long distance trail that goes from Salisbury in the north down to Christchurch uh, in the south. And um, basically heading northwards, and it'll just show you where I'm going, a little, uh, little footpath through a wooded area. On my right there's a little um, little stream. I think it's called Sopley Brook and we'll be seeing a lot more of that shortly. 
or I should say something, I think right at the beginning I might have uh, said or welcomed you on a new forest walk. Technically, at the moment, I'm not standing in the new forest, but we will eventually be crossing over the border when we get to the northern end of the route. This is something I never really fully understand. You see so many of these full bags of dog poo. <laughs> I'm being generous. Perhaps somebody's left them and they'll be coming back to collect them later on. I wonder. Anyway, let's get on to nicer things. So we just come out of that woodland area and wow, look at this. Quite a beautiful open area in the glorious uh, sunshine and then just a little breeze as well which is just what the doctor ordered that hopefully that's going to keep us nice and cool today Nice place to cool down as an aeroplane goes overhead. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're okay in there. I don't think there's any fish in this one. <laughs> He's not too sure. He'll come out just in case. Oh, what an enchanting little bridge over the, the brook. Now, um, the Avon Valley Path turns to the left but this is where we're going to, to leave it. We're going to carry on a footpath that continues along the banks of the brook. Look at all those um, acorns at the bottom of the little stream there glinting in the in the sunshine. Oh, it's quite magical as if they've been strewn like uh, little gold coins. It's really beautiful along here. I love the way the, the sun comes through the, the trees and just hear the birds song. Very, very peaceful. And Logan's on the lookout for squirrels. I say there is a, a brown tinge to the stream, but I think that's the uh, the actual bottom because the actual water itself is quite clear and uh, flowing quite nicely. <laughs> oh, what's he seen ahead? Probably on the lookout for blackberries I expect. He's making the best use of them while they're still about. Some cracking trees in this little wooded area as well. It's a little mixture. You've got some pine trees on the, the far side, and then there's some quite old oaks and some holly on this side. And a little bit of rhododendron as well. Aha, there we go. We're now crossing the border into the new forest. Uh, across a little road called London Lane. I'm still going to follow this footpath. Again, we're still heading north and uh, we've still got the stream on our right hand side. Wow! Ostriches! <laughs> now I'm trying to record this on my Canon maximum zoom, so apologies if the, uh, the picture's wobbling about a bit. I haven't got my tripod, but 
Ah, I wasn't expecting to see these guys. You never know what you're going to see when you're out on a walk, do you? They're certainly uh, enjoying the sunshine. Great. Well, that was a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting to see those. Seen quite a bit of wildlife this morning. I've um, just um, been watching a lovely uh, egret just by the, the brook. I uh, took a few photos, so hopefully uh, if it comes out okay, I'll put it up on screen to, to show you. I'm aware a few people do follow these uh, videos and uh, do the walks later. So if you're going to be following this route, this is an important bridge to look out for. We've been following the um, footpath alongside the little stream and it's this little concrete bridge with a railing that you need to look out for and this is where we start heading right and uh, start heading east well, it really is quite glorious now so we've come through this tiny little hamlet of Ripley again you can see the, the forest boundary behind me but we're now going to cross this little road and going to follow this bridle way that's going to take us in a dead straight line and it's a great little part of the walk because uh, it's all going to be shaded in a little uh, whirl with trees either side looking forward to this There's a sign that summer is nearly over. A crop of maize that looks as though it'll be harvested fairly soon. And that beautiful, there's some wonderful oak trees in the far distance. Well, we've gone as far east as we're going to go. Now I'm going to head south for a little bit and then head back westwards. Hope you're following all this. But I found a little uh, memorial bench just to sit down and have our sort of half-time slug of water. Looks so it's in memory of Stan and Terry Drake. What a magnificent memorial it is as well. Ah, oh, look at that. Now does that look like an animal? Two front legs, two back legs and a sort of trunk in the front. Or is the sun getting to my head? <laughs> I think I need a pint. Well, I've just come across some uh, lovely open fields full of these uh, tiny little butterflies. I think they're called small copper. We're now in a lovely shaded wood, which is great. Some strange animals in here though. Now, I had never seen anything like this before in my life. And I'm definitely going to have to wait till I get back home to look it up in a wildlife book to see exactly what it is. <laughs> I've made a temporary detour off our route of about uh, 200 yards to show you a field. <laughs> but it's quite an important field, I think, if I pan round. Because this used to be the northern end of a runway. It was known as RAF Winkton and it was a temporary advanced landing ground during the Second World War. It's only open for uh, a few months or so. But uh, when I came here oh, about 12 months ago, I did a little video, it lasted about three and a half minutes, just uh, going over the, the history of uh, the airfield. So what I'll do is at the end of this video, I'll tack those three and a half minutes on and uh, it'll tell you a little bit about uh, the field. On the homeward leg now just following a footpath that uh, I've got a field on one side and what looks like a military fence on the other. Now remember right at the start in the introduction I mentioned something called starlight. Well here it is. It's the 
site of what was once a, a radar station in World War II and it was called RAF Sopley. Basically there was a radar system called Ground Controlled Interception, GCI, and it could be located inland and provide surveillance through 360 degrees. On Christmas Day 1940 the first GCI system was set up here in these fields and its call sign was called Starlight. And it really was mobile. The generators, transmitters and aerials were all mounted on trucks. That was basically phase one. Eventually the operations room was built in phase two and in phase three the site became more permanent with much larger radar equipment. And I think an underground bunker was built at the time. Uh, just looking across through the fence, well the guardhouse is still here. It was actually designed to, to look like a, a bungalow. Anyway, the site here became a air traffic control radar station in 1959. That closed in 1974 and I think it became uh, a base for the Royal Signals till about 1977. And well, <laughs> there are rumours that it might have been uh, one of these sort of uh, mothballed Cold War bunkers in the 80s. Anyway, it was eventually sold in the 1990s. I think uh, the bunker is used for um, storage of uh, data. And there are still some odd little bits of evidence floating around of its former use outside the fence. Just down here there's an old boundary stone and I can see there's a W and a D which stands for War Department, I think, and an arrow. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up or a like and do make a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. Been a beautiful walk today. Once again, glorious sunshine. So, if this is our last summer walk of the year, then it's certainly been a good one. We're uh, off to the wool pack for some light refreshment. <laughs> so, until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.